talk about fighting complacency. Okay. And in this, um, and I'll be coming from the third chapter of Thessalonians. And really, when we talk about complacency, it's really just kind of like, well, this is who I am, and this is what I do. Everything else is happening around us. Other people have these urgencies, and you're not paying attention to it. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of, this is how I do, this is me. And when I think about that, I think that these are some of the key things that, the, that we, as people of God, have to fight against. It's kind of like this pride thing, like, just how I do things, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what else is going on. But when we um, think about complacency, it's this, um, it's defined as this feeling of quiet pleasure or security while unaware of some potential danger. It's self-satisfaction with the existing situation or condition. Don't want to change. Don't want to, you know, have a sense of urgency about ourselves. So, um, as I said before, you know, many of the character flaws that the body of Christ, is, body of Christ we have to guard against are in the pride family. And this kind of self-centered, you know, this is, this is me, this is who I am, we kind of justify you know, our actions and how we do things. Um, but the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is new. Mm -hmm. He is a new creature. Mm -hmm. So when we try to justify the things that we want to do in this self-centered mentality, um, we need to fight against that and understand, you know, what the word of God says about us. Um, when we have been called to Christ, there's an assignment on our lives and we are called to different assignments, and we need to act in them and walk in them with urgency. There's an urgency that is required. So let's, let's jump into the Word of God, and it's in 2 Thessalonians, um, the third chapter, and we're gonna read from the sixth to the 13th verses. So it says, but we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. We did not eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now, now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in well-doing. So I just want to... Um, just note about um, when we become idle and the, the really when we talk about idleness and, and when you if you're in a position where you're idle and not working it is like a breeding ground for sin um, you're undisciplined in your lives there's, there's just when you're idle there's undisciplined there's no um, structure, you're prone to do your own thing, and you, we want to war against that. We want to be careful not to fall in that category. We get sluggish, we get lackadaisical, lackadaisical and again, it's a breeding ground for sin. So there are some scriptures we're going to dive into that warns against the ease and comfort in Zion. Um, because there's so much work to do. We don't have time to just kind of prop our legs up, just kind of chill, oh, I'm saved, going to heaven, this is it, nothing else for me to do. No, there's work to do. The Bible talks about we need to pray for laborers in the kingdom because there's so much work to do. Um, so let's um, talk about some of these scriptures that warn against it and also talks about the blessing of working in the kingdom. So the first scripture I want to go to is Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And if we recognize the, the, the regression that happens, first you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Then you, you're walking along, now all of a sudden you're standing there. Idle talk, just doing unnecessary things with, with um, the scornful or with the sinners. So now you're seated in that place where your comfort level is just at an ultimate high and you should not be comfortable in those positions. So when we, we think about those different levels of comfort, we wanna, we wanna war against that. And then it goes on to say, his delight is in the law of the Lord. In that law, we want to meditate day and light, and night. Let's go to Luke 6, 24 through 22. And it says, but woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. And in, in this particular scripture, it's just talking about that comfort level. You think you got it all together. Oh yeah, all my bills are paid. Now, um, just as Sherelle was talking, you know, you have this goat mentality. I don't need any the savior. I don't need um, the father. But um, when, I, when I read this and it started talking about the rich, um, I thought about the scripture in Matthew where it talks about lying up treasures here on earth, where rust does corrupt. Um, we don't want to lay our treasures here on earth. They should be above. They should be in heaven. Because where your treasure lies, that's where your heart is. Um, let's go to Jude, Jude, the first chapter, the only chapter, um, one and three. <laughs> Beloved, while I was diligent, I was very diligent to write to you concerning your common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. So in that, we just want to earnestly, and the pastor talked about that, we want to urge you um, to get serious, get, be on purpose, get in the kingdom of God. We want to war against any complacent spirits or attitudes, and I want to just encourage you to just Walk in this earnestly in the faith. Um, and then Revelations 3, the third chapter, 15 through 19. This is talking about the lukewarm church. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because, I, because you say I am rich, I have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know why that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me the gold, my gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. So in this, we don't want to be the church, the lukewarm church. Um, they were declining, or they were sitting on the fence. And in this um, passage, Jesus is really encouraging us to just repent. <laughs> we need to, you know, settle ourselves and repent. We want to fight against um, falling into traps of being complacent. The last few scriptures I want to share with you is just some ways to fight complacency. But the biggest thing is to get busy working for the Lord. We can't do it in our own strength. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit. We need to rely on the Lord. We need to trust in what he has given us and, and walk in that. So let's just go on to Romans 12 and 11. Well, actually, we'll, we'll start at 9. And it says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, 
fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. This is one way we can fight against complacency. Okay, so we want to serve with excellence all the time. Not when there's just an audience. Not when you're just going to get an award. But know that God is always watching. He's looking for our best. Okay, next scripture. 1 Peter 5, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So I just want to encourage you, just be self-disciplined. Think rationally, not foolishly. When we talk about being sober, it's the only way you can be think rationally is when you're sober-minded. We want to be sober-minded. And the last um, scripture I want to go to is Galatians 6, 8 and 10. 8 through 10. And it says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary and weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So I just want to encourage you, don't give up, don't get discouraged. Sometimes we just kind of get into the mundane of living our lives. Oh, yep, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, that it, it almost, it almost sometimes will say it as a cliche, you know, but then it's like, what are you doing in the kingdom? Where, what are you doing? Are you just sitting, waiting for, for the Lord to come back? And that was, that was part of the problem with the church of the Thessalonians. Um, some of them, and I, I don't, I shouldn't say it, but, we believe that some of the Thessalonians were just sitting back, kind of waiting for the Lord to return. They knew his coming was imminent. We, we just kind of waiting. Um, I've heard people even say, oh, you don't have to, you don't have to pay your 30-year mortgage. You better pay your mortgage. Do what you're supposed to do. Pay your, more, pay your bills. Pay your light bill. You gonna sit in the dark till Jesus come? Pay a gas bill. We have a responsibility. There are things that we have to do. We have to go to work. There are things we need to do. Um, so it's not for us to just get saved and just kind of sit back, relax, fold our hands, and wait for the return of Jesus. We want some, some jewels in our crown, and those are going to come about as we work the works of him. And it's important for us to work while it is day. Scripture talks about it, that we work while it is day, because when night comes, no man will work. No man will work. And then another um, scripture that I thought about is um, the, the ten virgins. Remember five were wrong, I think it was five wise, five foolish. You know, the, the five wise, they prepare. The foolish is just kind of waiting around or whatever. Now the bridegroom come. Now it's like, oh, give me some oil. Some people in, in the church, we sitting around, want to benefit off of those who are doing the work. No, not so. God has required each one of us an, a, a, a thing to do. We have an assignment to carry out. So do your part. Do your part. Don't become too comfortable. And, and, and sometimes as we're sitting, and, and the Lord does give us an opportunity to rest because I don't want to make it seem like it's all just work, 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 work. But he gives us times of rest, but he also gives us assignments to do. Even in those times of rest, we have that time of rest, and then there's an opportunity to witness to someone. There's an opportunity to come alongside someone. Sometimes you're just in a position where you're going to listen to someone and, and just um, help, help them carry the load. So you want to be in positions to do that. And we're only going to be, to do it, be able to do that in Christ. So I encourage you to get in your word, to humble yourselves, to pray, and turn. <laughs> you know, sometimes we take that scripture and we pray, oh, I'm praying. Okay, we want to pray, we want to humble ourselves, we want to turn from wicked ways. And if we're not in that place of complacency, we won't get in a position where we will fall into wickedness and other diverse things that we have no business being in. You know, the Thessalonians, they were in busy bodies, they were doing things they were not supposed to be doing, and that's, like I said, idleness 
and complacency, breeding ground for sin, breeding ground for sin, and we want a war against that. So I hope I said something to encourage you, and um, you all have a blessed day. Amen. Facebook for more ministry and information.